Hi, welcome back to Keep It Dirty, a podcast where my guests share their life living functionally and sustainably, and the why behind their experiences living through our ever-changing environment. And I am your host, Leslie Dowling. I am a corporate speaker, sharing how one can jumpstart your path to increased revenue and productivity through restorative health techniques. Uh, Also, I just wanted to um, just take a minute to just honor um, all the people that perished during 9-11, as today we are recording on 9-11. Uh, According to NBC News, there were over 2,197 people that perished uh, and over 70,000 people that were exposed with health issues. So again, all my loved ones and my friends, I honor you today. And with that, I would love to introduce my guest, Dee Silenced. Dee Silenced is an artist and a truth seeker. And such an incredible, amazing artist. Um, as as anybody that is here today, you can see on YouTube for my viewers the incredible artwork that she does. So, D Silence, thank you for being here. Hi, Leslie. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. I'm excited. And I'd love for you to, uh, well, for anybody that can see this beautiful portrait, maybe you could speak into. Um, really the why behind your passion and perseverance as to what you do today and, and how you really resonate with being an artist. Uh, we, we'd love to hear more about that. Absolutely. And, and thank you for asking. Well, um, I had a little bit of fascination with art since I was a child. I remember watching my grandfather draw He was actually using uh, marker pens and I found it fascinating at the age of four because even then I could understand that, you know, those are not things you can correct, right? (laughs) Once the marker pen is on a page, that's where it's going to stay. And his work was so detailed and so beautiful. It was astonishing to me. So I tried to find something I could do. And I remember I played with charcoal quite a lot uh, back then. Um, I loved it. And then when I was growing up, I took pencil and I enjoyed it. But unfortunately, what has happened, um, or maybe fortunately, I was born with the ability to understand the artistic world, but also be fascinated with numbers. And as I was growing up, it pushed me into a completely corporate career. Uh, in my in my daily life, as I call it, I am actually a financial accountant. Um, And for many, many years, that artistic side was unrealized. I just didn't have the time. You know, I got myself into the little corporate rat race, you know, trying to make a career, making sure that I understand everything and that I'm, you know, reaching new goals every minute, Um, that I didn't have the time for that creative part of my nature to actually have some attention. And um, when I was about 33 Somewhere around that age, I started feeling that urge, you know, something was missing in my life. There was something that I I knew I could do, I knew I should do, but I couldn't name, right? So um, quite by accident, well, perhaps not, but <laughs> I was renovating the bedroom and I spent all my savings because I wanted to make it like in a shabby chic style. So I spent plenty of money, bought a sewing machine, so my own curtains, you know. I really got myself into it. And when I finished, (laughs) I realized that the the walls were quite empty and I needed some art on them. But I couldn't, like, my savings were gone, right? My budget was gone. So I figured that the easiest way would be to buy canvas and just paint something, right? And I had such a great fun with, with, with paint, with acrylics. I was just like, damn, this is just, like, really, really enjoyable. Um... But, but but it still wasn't it, right? It was messy and the paint has a specific, you know, smell. Um, I didn't have much space in the house for, for, you know, canvas and paint and, you know, drying and all of this process. And then I remembered that I used to play it with pencil. But I wasn't, like, I wasn't convinced. And I remember a conversation with my best friend of 20 years, um, I said to her, you know, I wish I could draw like, like artists to do, like like portrait artists, but I just don't have the skill. <laughs> and 
And I remember she said to me, girl, get over yourself. When have you last tried? And I realized I haven't since I was a child, right? And, and, and because she challenged me, I was, I, was, I was really petty, right? I thought like, I'll prove a point. So I took a photo of her without telling her. And I literally drew her portrait. I wanted to prove a point that I can't, that she will not recognize herself even. But then when I finished, I was shocked that it had actually looked like a human being. And I had to call her and send it to her and, and, and basically thank her that she challenged me. It taught me a lot about myself. It taught me a lot about, you know, my, my little mistakes and misconceptions. But that is my why. That is, that is my why. That is the reason why I do this, because it's just keep calling me in, right? And I've learned to recognize that calling and I really enjoy it. Well, you are just so talented and gifted. Um, so are you still friends with the person that kind of was the catalyst to put you on this trajectory um, today? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, we are still friends. We're counting the years, you know. We matured oh, over 20. We're now adults in our friendship. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's amazing. So, um, and I did ask you this before, but I'm going to ask because a lot of people that are listening, they're just inspired by seeing people that are doing something that they really are happy and enjoying doing, right? Uh, we have one life to live, so why not tap into something that resonates with our heart and in our spirit. Um, so when you were younger, um, did you, you said you dabbled with different um, mediums or are you, are you just, have you been doing strictly stencils or pencil, or maybe you could speak more into like the portraits. Um, do you find that is really your calling right now? Or do you see yourself expanding into other like larger canvas or, other types of medium. Absolutely. So when I was a child, as every child, you know, we had the art at school. So I was forced to use different paints and, you know, crafts and arts and all of this beautiful and colorful world. Um, but I was always in preference of charcoal or pencil. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I always been fascinated by, by, by the challenge it presents, right? You have one color and somehow you have to apply it in a way that creates an image in the viewer's eyes, right? It's, it's just the technique that is required to make sure that you take out or highlight the most important parts so jointly they create that image. And for some reason, like I have this weird thing, for example, in my personal life, like I will not write in a blue pen. I just dislike it. <laughs> I much prefer the, the, the black pen. Um, it has like kind of elegance to it for me. Um, now, as I was growing up, of course I was trying, and as I mentioned, I had this little romance with acrylics, mm -hmm. but it always drives me back to pencil, right? Mm -hmm. And portraits have always been that, that forbidden land a little bit, right? If you can capture the expression and the resemblance of somebody's face, yeah. that is for me like, that holy grail of being, of, of proving to yourself that you are capable, right? There's, there's a lot of things you can change or, or misdraw or misrepresent on objects, or you can be very creative. But if you don't capture that, that, that detail of that facial feature, the person will not resemble themselves. It, they will resemble somebody else, right? And that's a skill that for me is worth having, and I want to just perfect that more and more. But to answer your question as well, will I ever... Yes, I will. I will probably be tempted to experiment. Um, unfortunately, at this moment, I don't have conditions good enough to go back to, to paint. It requires space. And with paint, I always enjoyed more abstract um, type of expression, right? It fascinates me to take a bucket of paint <laughs> and just kind of, you know, just splash it everywhere and, and just play with it. And for that, I will require a studio space that I can damage. <laughs> uh, at the moment, it's not part, part of my journey and my reality. But in the future, why not? You know, I, I think there's something amazing in every craft or art because it teaches you something, it pushes you somewhere else. It gives your mind that that space away a little bit from reality for a split moment, you are so 
you know, into that creation that you can forget everything. Like it's, it's it, for me personally, it's a meditative method, right? And if I will go to anything else, I mean, portraits are not the only things that I would draw. Um, I don't have many in this, um, many examples in this portfolio, but this is, for example, uh, a, a metal bell that I drew. Um, for some reason, I just, I just like the way it looked. So I wanted to capture that in, uh, in pencil. Um, so yes, by all means, bigger, um, bigger portraits, large expressions. Uh, it all requires a little bit more of um, infrastructure as well, but I'm not scared of a challenge, right? I'm scaling up and anything can happen. Like every po every portrait I draw for my own practice or my own in my own leisure time will have different elements, for instance, to challenge me, right? Either it's going to be an intricate star a scarf, or in this case, this is Chris Brown. I can't really... Oh, let me try to turn it around. So... I chose this particular uh, photo because there was this intricate tattoo on his neck, right? I always like a challenge, so I'm not stopping at anything. <laughs> We're going to keep going. I, I just, it's just amazing. The first, uh, for anybody that is uh, watching on YouTube, the first one was Salvador Dali, who is a Spanish artist. And just the expressions, look at this. It's like they're popping out at us and they're, they're becoming alive and, and I'm waiting for them to say something. And I, I love the fact that you're, you're not afraid to like artists usually are this way, go out of your boundaries because when we kind of are in, in a situation, I think also with the ebbs and flows of life, we tend to stick to certain mediums and then maybe just expand and, and not be afraid to, I used to color, and not go in the space, you know, in the coloring book. And I would just create another image beyond that on the space. And my teachers would say, you're supposed to color in the lines. And I'd be like, but I see more in this coloring book than you might not. And they just looked at me like I was crazy. Um, so just being the nonconformist is just uh, the self-expression of being able to not speak, but also to express it in other ways is really um so powerful uh and i yeah and right yeah, you know what i mean personally for me and that doesn't necessarily have to be the reality for everybody else right because we we all organize our world in our own little ways right but i was always um when I was a child, I was also interested in writing. Like I wrote poetry. I was I was recognized in in, in um, competitions. But um, I remember I had a conversation with my dad. That was at the time when I was writing. Um, I was quite upset one of the days. I must have been 14, 13 maybe. I was quite upset uh, because I wrote a poem. I submitted that poem to my teacher. Uh, there was like a little competition. and um, And it never got mentioned, right? So I was really upset and I remember speaking with my dad and my dad said, well, this is the worst that could have happened to you. I need you to understand that. And he said, if you get a, I, and, and, I, and I remember I, I, I was trying to be smart and I said to him, well, it could have been worse. She could, the teacher could have said something bad about it. And my dad said, no, that wouldn't be worst because whether you get the good press or the bad press, you get the press which means something that you have created moved somebody. And it doesn't really matter how. You may hear from somebody they don't like your art, but they had to stop for a second to acknowledge it in order to identify they don't like it. You already won. You, are, you were on their minds for a split second. So many of the people that they will pass on the street won't be. And I carry this with me, right? So I don't really, I don't really give up. I, I just want to keep going. And I believe that the more you break the rules, the more you experiment, the more you are likely to design, like discover your own style, like be full expression of yourself, not just not just copy somebody, not just do something because somebody taught you to do it this way, but you become your full expression. You do things your own way. And if you think about it, and not that I claim to ever be in that place, uh, <laughs> I don't think if I even wanted to, but if you think about the greatest artists that ever walked this planet, 
They were the ground breakers. They were the rule breakers, right? Picasso was not doing what everybody else believed he should. And look how we value that art, right? So that's why I, I don't, I don't, um, you know, sometimes things work, sometimes things don't work. But I am open to experimenting because I feel like there's more, more of me to give. So would you say artists are more really tapped in and to, tuned into their intuitiveness than the average person that maybe has not tapped into their creative abilities? Because I, and I'd love to know your, your take on this. I think we all have it in us. We just have to learn how to tap into it because I see a lot of people that are retiring now and um, they're taking on new hobbies. And a lot of them never even picked up like drawing or anything. And all of a sudden, they're just these amazing artists. So I wonder if it's the wisdom realizing that, you know, it's now or never. I want to pick up something that I would love to do, a hobby. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? We think everyone has this potential. You know, uh, me being able to do to, to, to this I don't consider myself being special or anyhow, you know, extra talented. I believe that this is a skill that you develop, but you have to be really ready to, to submit to it, right? I was not able to draw the way I draw today when I was looking at my creation through my corporate financial number-oriented mind, right? It's not about quantifying. It's about letting go. It's not about strictly adhering to some rules. It's about breaking them. It's not about following somebody's say-so. It's about deciding what you think should happen on that canvas, on that paper, right? Owning, or owning that process, like fully being submerged and emerged into it. And I think a lot of people just, on, like, the world that we live in today is very organized, right? You know, you get up, you go to work, you raise kids, you, you have, like, order of events, and, and not much time is left for us to actually enjoy or or dig deep into ourselves, right? And spend the time with ourselves and, and ask ourselves, you know, maybe I would like to write something. Maybe there's something like, maybe there's a book in me, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe there's a, may, maybe there's a portrait, maybe there's a painting, or maybe, maybe there's some sort of sculpture or another form of expression. It doesn't have to be even physical. It could be digital, you know, but I do believe that, that everybody has something to give because we all creative creatures. Uh, we've been given this wonderful creative um, mind. Um, many people that I speak to ask me, you know, can everybody draw? Of course everybody can. And it doesn't matter how it looks like. Skill is a skill, can be improved in time. But just opening up enough to try and be ready to risk it, uh, be okay with the fact that something is not perfect, and be okay with the journey and the learn the teaching that it gives you. Like drawing taught me so much patience, for example, so much appreciation of my own work. Uh, it taught me it taught me stepping away and not rushing things. So you know, th there's a lot of there's a lot of lessons there. So um, I think everybody should try at least. And if it's not, you know, if you try drawing and it it just frustrates you, if it's not for you, maybe it's going to be painting, maybe it's going to be music, maybe it's going to be uh, writing. I would encourage everyone to find that creative expression where they can literally connect and let go. Such a, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like very freeing feeling, extremely pleasurable. It's very cathartic, can you say, or, or just... Um... It's yeah, because art is a way of um, just unwinding art therapy, which we have in the school system, in, in our school system. Um, but unfortunately, in 2009, they've had some cutbacks. They've done a lot of um, changes, but that was such a beautiful way of children to express themselves if they're frustrated. Um, and, and that's such a freeing experience to be able to draw, to create. And I think that's something that they should instill here again in the U.S. Do they have that, do you know, in the European countries, um, having the art uh, appreciation and instilling that into schools, which we used to do here in the U.S.? Um, and I'm hoping some schools you do that because the things that you really um, shouldn't cut are the arts, music. That's the first thing that they cut. 
from schools. And I think it is so much needed to form who we are and to have solid um, foundation. Uh, art is, is, is so important. And what are your thoughts on that? I, I I don't have children myself, so I don't have to go through the schooling system, so I may not be the best informed, right? But um, to the best of my knowledge, let's put it that way, <laughs> music, uh, at least in my country of origin, music and art and crafts are all are part of curriculum still. Um, and children are encouraged to um, to attend the lessons. Not necessarily, I would say... Maybe they're not necessarily well-founded and there's kind of like a need for upgrade, but there is an encouragement of some kind, right? Um, but it is important. It surely is important. Um, we we are in this world of, of um, schedules and meetings and emails and technology and running from place to place and being stuck in the traffic that, that there's really not much time left for self-expression and art and unfortunately that also takes a toll on the artistic world right not a lot of artists we know that don't 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 do very well simply because we just don't have time to appreciate the work and i wish it was different not only because there's just naturally a portion of society that is artistic and they they find it to be they their the job really right the things they do the the way they earn money um it would allow them to kind of thrive in this environment and and create even beautiful more beautiful expressions uh, and creations because they wouldn't have to hustle a second job somewhere you know um till midnight just to pay the bills right so i believe that that would benefit everybody and um regardless of how our history looked like as a society as a civilization Art always existed, always been, and always will be. Um, maybe we're just going through a little bit crazy times, you know, <laughs> if this was Renaissance, everybody was kind of, you know, paintings everywhere and art everywhere. Now we're a little bit more into technology. So I think just because of that, that we shift in that, that, um, that focus, we just shouldn't forget to make sure that we still instill those, those artistic values into our, especially children and, and, and uh, teenagers, so, so we can enjoy this art, um, you know, amongst our busy life schedules. Yeah, I really, um, you know, just reflecting as you're talking, um, I didn't realize until I became an adult to um, realize how well grounded I am when it comes to appreciating other cultures. I had an opportunity with visiting family and friends, with uh, first generation parents, and um, and art is so rich and goes back hundreds of years in so many areas compared to America, which is like a baby. And so you could just feel the, um, the convictions of, of people so um, wanting to keep their culture, their history, their art alive because incredible museums um, that we don't have here in the States. I mean, we have the uh, MoMA, we have Metropolitan Museum of Art, MoMA, um, and the Guggenheim, but nothing like, um, you know, going to Versailles and, and, and all of the beautiful gardens and Rodin Museum and and such rich, rich history uh and and so for me i guess having family that were artists my mother was a hosiery designer my father was always dabbling in art really instilled in me that seeing how happy they were i wanted a part of that and and i'm kind of removed now as a practitioner and i want to go back to that because i miss that ah oh, look at that the Pirates of the Caribbean, right? <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> the walking death, baby. Wow. You and guys, is that, what was the most difficult thing to silence, to really perfect? Was it the expression in the eyes? Because you were saying, you know, it takes a while to get to this level. Not somebody could just, oh, in a week, I'm going to be able to do this. I mean, what was the most difficult part of this technique? Uh, that uh, The expression in the eyes or what? Well, I, to be honest with you, there are, there are different parts of, you know, every portrait is different, right? Yeah. And 
as I said, I always go for something that, or try to go for something I haven't done before. So it's either the tattoo, like right here, you have very intricate kind of like hairdo. I always try to do different things. And I also test different techniques, right? I, I don't think, I don't think I have my own technique yet, right? So I go from using different tools or, or using different methods of application or uh, or using uh, or, or applying certain layers in different order. So um, what what I particularly dislike, right, um, is specifically the hair. For me, the hair is always like I'm dragging that part, right? <laughs> um, maybe because it's such a delicate element, it should look like it's swift and, you know, our hair are moving all the time and the more delicate they are, the better that looks. And sometimes I just struggle to get that, um, get that swiftness out of the drawing, right? But I also dislike drawing very dark parts, right? So um, whatever the, 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 the pencil needs to be applied deeply into the paper, uh, it requires several layers and it requires application in a certain order. So then you, so then it, basically just melts together nicely. Um, there's always a challenge, right? <laughs> wow. But, but do you feel that as an artist, we're, we're very critical on ourselves because the wisps of hair that you just showed me in the previous pages, it's as if you could touch it and it was so light and airy. Um, and I'm like, wow, no, the silence gets it. Like she's like, I, I it's, so real that you could just go into the page, touch this, just like here, the layers and the depth of of the um, the light versus the dark. It's it's like you could dive into the darkness. So for me, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, it, it's just uh, beautiful. Uh, so do you find that artists are critical, more critical on themselves? Um, you know, like their own worst enemy because they're always pushing and pushing for perfection or just trying something new. Uh, so yeah, I was just curious. I suppose potentially. Um, I am definitely, I have tendency to, <laughs> to be critical um, of my own work, but that's only because I want to, uh, I have this ambition, right? This beautiful plan. I want to learn to do it to the best of my abilities. And I set myself a goal. Um, and I will I will try to get there, right? For myself, just to prove myself a point. Um, and I know that in order for that to happen, certain things need to align in my technique, in my, uh, in my tools, like the selection of tools. Uh, I have to know exactly which tool I'm going to use here or there. Um, so, so all of this goes into, or, or, or brings me to the to the fact that certain portions or certain parts of the portrait need to happen faster for me, right? And I work on her probably half of the time right, that I have on a portrait is my fight with her. Um, and I know that I probably should be a little bit more easygoing about it, but um, it just stresses me stresses me out. I have tendency, for example, to start portrait from her because I know that this is the most likely element that I'm going to be unsatisfied with. Um, and if that works, then I feel in the rest of the face, right? <laughs> but, um, but that's my, my personal fight, right? My personal, my personal ways of, of mo mm, motivating myself, challenging myself even further, like darkness, right? As I said, this is, this is time consuming um, and it requires special techniques. And I know that it takes me a little bit longer today than it could. I know that there is a technique or there's a method that I either haven't found yet or haven't tested yet that would give me better effects faster, right? And for me now, all is about speed. I just want to, I just want to prove to myself that I can um, reduce the time that I need to finish a portrait. The second like ambition. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit complex probably. <laughs> no, no, because I find just with, um, just being a one woman show proving to my family after four years that I could figure out this social media thing, because I'm like an immigrant on social media apps in the sense that, 
Um, I don't understand a lot. I don't know this big engine of these teams of people, how they work behind the scenes. And I feel like such a newbie trying to learn the language. But once I do, it's like I'm ready to move on with my creativeness of doing something a little different, like having you as a guest and saying, why do I have to see the person? An artist is here today, my guest who's so passionate about what she does. Why not show her artwork? Or I'm going to have somebody that's going to walk through their organic gardens and being so proud of all that he's growing. Why not push the button? So um, I understand. I get you in that respect. Absolutely. Yeah. And and so I also see that you you've you've had really good role models. I mean, you talk about your dad and what he instilled in you. Um, or do you who would if I could ask you, who would be your role model? That is a very good question. I don't believe I actually established one for myself. Um, I love my parents to bits, right? But they had their own challenges in life. And they fell a little bit short of becoming role models, right? They made mistakes. And I today understand why. And, and I, I completely understand the circumstances. And I forgave them a long time ago. But... Um, but I wouldn't say that they were ready to become role models at that moment of their life, right? Um, and I was always, um, I was always on my own. That was my, that was my very lonely journey. I felt misunderstood. I felt misplaced. Um, I felt extremely lonely. And even though I was surrounded by, you know, hundreds of people, because I was always sociable, but I didn't feel understood. And for many, many years of my life, I thought <laughs> I was looking for that understanding. I was looking for that acceptance, you know, and I thought that I can't be happy without it. And it only hit me probably when I turned 40. It literally hit me that it was, <laughs> okay, Leslie, truthfully, that was my 40th birthday dead on because I heard from a person close to me something I didn't expect to hear. Mm. And at that moment, I was like, well, I've done life a wrong way around. I've done myself this service. So I immediately decided to do life the other way around. And, um, and now I know that I'm the only one that can make myself happy. I don't really care about people's acceptance. And it changed so much in my perspective and my expression of life. But because of that, you know, that little rat race that I was in, that, that little vicious circle of my first 40 years, I never really established role models. And now I just don't need to. I, I feel like I'm my own role model. You know, I'm, I'm the best version of myself I can be or I'm ready to be. If I will imagine myself to be any better, I can be any better in any area of my life. So there's literally no point looking up to. Um having the role models because they may be in one area, but there might be another area of their life that is maybe lacking for my standards, right? Or, or what I want to achieve. So I've decided just to build myself up in a way that I can be proud of it. And the silence to the name is part of that journey. Um, I don't know if you've heard the story of the, of the, of the name. No. Can you share with everybody? Cause we'd love to know. Okay. Okay. So um, I was going through a little bit of transformation probably like five years ago. And um, back then I've already started what, what I call a process of delabeling myself. Mm -hmm. So basically understanding all the labels that are upon, uh, like upon me and identifying what they mean and what positions they put me in. So for instance, right, uh, we are all maybe we're all brothers, sisters, parents, um, maybe, you know, co-workers, maybe neighbors, right? It all means something, but it also all comes with expectation and imagination of how that relationship will work, right? Uh, with the stereotype, how it should work, how it should look like, what's allowed, what's not allowed, all the rules, right? I just felt overwhelmed. Mm. So I tried to delabelize myself, as I call it. 
and tried stripping that layer by layer, almost like an onion, right, to get to the core of who I really am. Am I just a sister, a daughter, wife, co-worker? Is there more in me? And as I was doing this, I've realized that my actual name is part of a label, right? As soon as somebody calls me that name, or as soon as they hear that name and they can associate that name with me, they know me personally, they immediately have an expectation of who I am, who is going to show up, right? And I don't know if I'm just that, yeah? I don't know if I've tapped to everything there is. And there was a random day I was sitting in my living room watching some random TV show. And I suddenly heard that, that, that whisper in my, in my like, head, desilenced. And um, as English is not my first language, I wasn't even sure if the word exists. So I googled it, because it sounded funny <laughs> at first. And I discovered the first thing that came up was a explanation that um, desilencing is related to genes, right? When scientists work on genes, they can silence them or desilence them. So basically activate or deactivate. And I found it so fitting for that part of my life. I was like, yes, I want to desilence as many parts of myself, as many of those little particles that are true to me that may be living in me suppressed because I'm expected to be a daughter uh, or, you know, wife. Um, that's that's where I want to be. I want to shout about it. So that's how the silence came to life. This is me. I'm, I'm every day repeating this, embedding this, this, this drive in me, this, this, this journey, embracing that. Um, although in most places on social media, <laughs> And I love uh, social media audio apps and now audio video uh, as well. Uh, every time somebody sees me there, <laughs> they immediately suspect it has something to do with me being more vocal. And and I usually sit there or often sit there quietly. So I'm being challenged on this, you know, how come the silenced you are supposed to be vocal and you're not <laughs> it's just like, yeah, that's not what it means. But uh, that's 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 just a that's just a story of the of the name. That's fascinating. So would you be upset because you're just inspiring me? And there was something, just your energy and everything, obviously on these social media apps, we've never personally met that I was just like, she is my tribe. I've always been, the, I was always the nonconformist and my mother always, always supported me in that. But so if I would be called single, single nucleotide polymorphisms, which is genetic SNPs, which you can turn on and off now with research and all that I know, um, maybe I should be called SNP. <laughs> and people would really wonder, what's going on with this Leslie girl? But I love the desilence, the um, just the way that <laughs> you, you know, uh, evolved and, and, and true. And that's why I knew when I was going to ask you this question, nobody has ever answered it the way you did about being your own role model, like you've been through, been there, done it, but so many um, areas and glimmers of different people have these role model-esque ways about them, which is really interesting. But I do want to ask you two things. First of all, how do you pick your, um, what would you call it, people that you, you know, uh, your models uh, that you draw? Uh, and also, uh, do you have any interesting hobbies that maybe nobody knows about that you'd like to share today? <laughs> <laughs> Good ones. Uh, so um, how do I choose the people I draw? So uh, obviously I draw commissions, right? So when I have a commission work, I don't choose the model. The model chooses me, right? Uh, so then I'm forced to to draw the people that are, are commissioning me. So it is creative, but differently. <laughs> now, when I draw for myself, and all of this, what you see here is basically my, my practice rounds. Um, I just choose something that moves me in that moment, right? So either I may have seen a movie and there was an actor or actress that I actually liked how they played, right? Uh, there might be an event. Like um, Kate here, there was an event. She she came up um, publicly, came out publicly after months of us not seeing her. And I thought, my gosh, this shot of her, she, she seems so happy and so healthy. It moved me. Um, like, um, like this girl here, 
I absolutely loved the hair, right? I felt like, oh my gosh, I wish to have locks like this. This is beautiful. Um, so I only draw for, for practice, for pleasure. I only draw people that move me, that that's something that I can actually like connect with in that moment. Um, maybe somebody's sad and I don't feel all that well, or maybe somebody's extremely happy and I feel happy, or maybe, maybe they have something about them, you know, that, that deep look behind their eyes, like that, that depth from that photo, or maybe interesting post that I, you know, I swipe through photos for, for hours and then suddenly there's that one that you stop at for a few seconds, just like there's something about it. So, so I prefer... In those moments when I practice, I prefer the, 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 the picture to call me. And because it's a practice round, then I usually use available resources out there in the internet. So I choose actors or some, some, some photos, not being picky. Um, and, um, and I forgot now the second part of your question, Leslie. Look, oh, look at me. It. Just I rambling. I'll admit. Um, hobby. Other than a hobby. What else? is it that you love to do other than art um so i am i am <laughs> um i'm one of those people that really don't have a hobby because we cannot stick to one that's my problem so i want to taste and test everything and do everything i just cannot commit to it forever so um in my life, I've had so many hobbies and I'm, and I'm really excited about it because I can do so many things, right? I can, I can, uh, <laughs> I can do tiling. Um, I can do wallpapers. I can drill any hole and put together any cabinet in the house because I just wanted to learn, right? It's like, how do I do this? Um, I can do a little bit of interior designing because it was fascinating me. I was just like, okay, how do people do this that in a small space, they get this illusion of like you know a huge space and, and everything can fit right um once i bought a sewing machine i can't sew a lo like you know elaborate clothing but i can do pillowcases <laughs> and this year the, the 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 um the hobby of the season was gardening i never gardened in my life i planted a lot of uh, plants this year Unfortunately, almost everything died. The weather wasn't good here in the UK. It was really gloomy and, and dark and lack of sun. So a lot of plants suffered because of that. But, um, and I go back to those hobbies, you know, I rotate them. Uh, I love cooking. And funnily enough, you know, drawing was my hobby. <laughs> that was a hobby that became something more, right? Um, so a lot of people that know me through my day work, um, they're not even aware that I'm drawing. I don't really necessarily want to make those two worlds clash, right? Not at this stage of my life anyway. But um, but drawing, for example, is one of my hobbies. So I don't think I have anything else like that. But um, just to tell you, <clears throat> I'm great in Canva, right? I love putting videos together. Um, I love talking to people. I love I love listening to stories. I love writing. So there's a lot of things that I do. But I wouldn't call any of them like my dedicated hobby, like that's it and nothing else is needed in my life. I have to get distracted with something else every few weeks um, because I like a new challenge. I like exercising my brain in a new direction. Like, let me see if I can do something here. If I fail, I fail, but at least I'm going to try. <laughs> and I think that that's the key of, of not being afraid of failure because the greatest artists and inventors failed several, several times before they had that aha moment. But as human beings, we were put on this planet to uh, have our falls and fumbles. We're not perfect. And I think if more people just realize that and embrace that, um, the less critical we will be on ourselves because I could be my own worst enemy. Uh, I was told that a lot when doing a lot of competing with horses and tennis and everything and sports. I'm very physical. That's the way I express myself. If somebody sat me down and said, you have to be behind a desk every day, I think I would want to pull my hair out because I need to move my body. And I think it's just in my DNA or it could be something from something else. So, um, but that freedom of expression and be able to just release, uh, is so therapeutic. Um, and I, I just really appreciate that we took the time and you took the time out of your day 
to be with us. Um, and for all my viewers and listeners, um, thank you. But Desilence, how can people reach out to you if they're interested in having something commissioned by you? Ah, that's the one. We just did Jeff, that. Jeff. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's we just did that. So um, I am on almost every social media, but I don't really utilize social media too much. So I'm trying to correct the course and be a little bit more available. Um, my platform of choice these days is the newly uh, launched platform called Chara, um, simply because it allows me to have the audio experience uh, with people so we can have a conversation and I can also live draw, which this is um, the latest drawing that we've done live in uh, on Chara together with, with a gr great group of people. So um, if anybody is on Chara, that's probably the easiest way to get me. But you can also find me on TikTok. Um, my handle is at Desilenced on X, which is Desilenced X, on Instagram as Desilenced Art. For some strange reason, none of those names are unified, but uh, but that's probably the easiest way to to reach me. Um, message me if you're interested in conversation, of course, and and if available, or if you even need an invitation to chat, I may probably spare one or two and um, and get you there so we can have this uh, experience of you know you seeing me draw and then having a conversation about uh, art and anything else in life and and actually experience this creation together. Oh, that wow I, I just I'm just looking at his hair the wisps of the gray I mean it's like I want to just touch his glasses and feel his beard it's just amazing uh you have he had such a good shot I I loved that shot wow. when I saw you because it was it was black and white in origin I just looked at it and I was yeah. just like That's yes awesome. that looks so awesome spot on and even the teeth like you could see the reflection and, you know, the fact that you get, as you get older, gracefully, you have a little, you don't have perfect <laughs> white pearly teeth anymore, but you just captured every little detail, desilenced. Um, and was there anything else you wanted to share? Because I would love for you to come back and actually do a drawing maybe um, for, you know, uh, an hour, uh, just to give a taste for everyone to see. Uh, the beauty that you would have on your on your canvas so absolutely and you know i i i have to apologize it, it was planned to happen today but unfortunately my eyesight failed me um oh. due to a little bit of a hay fever and, <laughs> and a little bit of of tiredness it's just too blurry um and i wouldn't be able to 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 uh, you know entertain and and probably yeah. give my work justice so i do apologize for that but by all means yes of course i i, I would gladly come back uh leslie you you're a wonderful person and wonderful host and i, I love you and your podcast um so by all means, just give me a shout, tell me when, and I'm here and I'm going to draw something. Maybe not the entire portrait, that would be probably a little bit too long for an hour, but um, a long, uh, you know, this takes me like eight hours probably, <laughs> but um, but wow. we can come up with something or maybe I can yeah. pre-draw something to a, some, uh, some uh, level and we can take it from there. Sure. I would love that. I would absolutely love that. So, so again, thank you for your time. It, it's been an honor and, and also a, an amazing journey on Chatter. I have met so many incredible people and have been honored to be able to be in the beta group as it grows. So if anyone is interested, Chatter is the, the rage of social media now. It's an amazing app. Um, and also, I just wanted to thank my viewers and listeners. Uh, Keep It Dirty podcast is one of the top 10% most popular shows out of over 3 million podcasts globally ranked by Listen Score, which is the estimated popularity score. And also, uh, my dear friends have Free Yourself fragrances from Gras France. They're all natural. Uh, they also do, uh, they have their uh, workshop. They have a place in Vermont and they use local artisans. So everything is eco friendly, uh, also green chemistry. And, and they give back 10% of their profits to different organizations. So if you have an opportunity for a limited time, you can get 25% off total purchases by entering code in all caps, KEEP, 
it dirty at checkout. And again, that's freeyourself.com. Uh, for everyone, please get out there, ground with Mother Earth, and remember to try to keep it dirty. Take care, everybody. Bye.